Is it possible to get every single achievement in Little Nightmares, including the Secrets of the Moor DLC, and then get a refund from Steam? Steam's refund policy states that if you play a game for less than 2 hours, and own it for less than 14 days, you can get your money back. So I thought to myself, why not try and get 100% completion in the game, and then get my money back from Steam? There is a total of 22 achievements to get in this game. Some of them are unmissable story related ones, but in order for me to get all of them, I would need to do these things. Collect all gnomes, break all statues, light at least 20 lanterns and candles, jump on a bed 6 times, play the piano, throw 3 ingredients into the pot in the kitchen chapter, dodge 6 attacks from enemies, and do all of this while beating the game in under an hour, and also without dying. And that's just the main game, not including the DLC. For the DLC, I would need to collect all 15 float sams, 5 on each chapter, throw a wrapped head into the bucket on chapter 1, burn the wooden gnome on chapter 2, and break the glass phase on the final chapter. This was going to be such a tough challenge, considering I'd only played through the game once before, and only had 3 hours of playtime. And I'm also going to get tons of questions about the Steam achievements that are popping up on screen. I am using a great program called Steam Achievement Notifier, and that's how I'm getting these PlayStation 5 achievements to pop up while playing the game on Steam. I'll leave a link to the program and the Discord in the description, so you can check this out for yourself. But before I get into the video, I just want to give a shout out to today's sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service, and it's 100% online. With the state of health services around the world post-COVID, especially talking about the National Health Service in the UK, where I live, just trying to get a telephone appointment can take weeks. And for something as serious as mental health, it's not a good idea to leave it that long. This is where BetterHelp comes in. With its 100% online service, all you need to do is answer a few questions regarding your needs and preferences for therapy, and you'll be matched with a therapist. It will take some time to get a match, but it will be significantly quicker than going other routes. Once matched, you can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it's via text, phone, or video call. You can message your therapist at any time, and schedule live sessions when it's convenient for you. If your therapist isn't the right fit for any reason, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional charge. With better help, you can get the same professionalism and quality that you expect from an in-office therapy, but with a therapist that is custom picked for you, more scheduling flexibility, and at a more affordable price. You can get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com forward slash rtrance. That's betterhelp.com forward slash rtrance, which will also be linked in the description, or you can scan the QR code on the screen. Thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Just after taking control of 6, I light the first lantern of this speedrun, before heading into the vents. And once I reach the top of these stairs, I break the first statue of the game. I can break most of the statues in the game faster by sliding into them. I also jump on this bed 6 times, and that will give me the achievement Highly Sprung. Once I have moved this chair to get close enough to the door to open it, I then open the fridge door, and that spawns in a gnome that runs into a little hole in the corner. I go through the vent to hug the first gnome of the run, and then also light my second lantern. Climbing to the top of the fridge, I encounter the worms for the first time, and these are just one of the few enemies in the game. But they are still quite terrifying, because if I get too close to them, I will die instantly. How have I ended up over here? This might go pear shape. Once I got past the worm pit and lit up lantern number four, I ascend to the top of this room, where I need to turn a crank and jump back across the gap fast enough to get through the door. Once I have regained control of 6, I climb the bedsheet rope which leads to another lantern, and then pull the lever hidden behind the door without having to move the box with the paper towels in it. I then sprint through this entire room, remembering to let go of the sprint button while squeezing through the metal bars, so that I am regenerating stamina and not wasting it. I encounter the evil light for the first time, and in this section, I just take it slow and don't take any risks. I then climb to the top of these boxes, and continue running to the right for a few steps, and then turn back around. 
This activates the checkpoint and will allow me to reset each time I need to go back there. I reset the first time after grabbing gnome number 2 and lantern number 5, and then after I go across the landing to destroy one of the statues. I now encounter Roger the janitor for the first time, which I easily get past by just running and skipping one of the lanterns in this room. In practice, I tried to light this lantern a few times, but on rare occasions, Roger would chase after me and grab six while she is climbing the cages. It's now time for the first hunger segment, where it is possible to skip some of the animations by making six fall over when they trigger. That was close actually, but I didn't get it. I didn't manage to do that though, and I also failed to skip the second animation by climbing onto the ledge as the animation starts. How silly of me. Once Six has consumed the bread, it's onto the final stretch of the first chapter. I need to disable the electricity so I can get past the metal bars, and I do that by climbing up to the top of this room, lighting another lantern, and jumping onto this hanging cage. I then climb upwards using the chain links, and then jump onto the platform on the right, where at the top I am greeted with a small puzzle. I pull the lever on the wall first. This will turn on the power to the central lever, and I move that one to the right and then to the left. This will allow me to jump onto the moving cage and get to the other side where the electricity lever is located. I climb up the filing cabinet, pull the lever to disable the electricity and then head to the room on the left. This room contains another lantern and a gnome trapped in the cage. I let the gnome out, follow it to the filing cabinet, give it a hug and then use the rope to descend to the bottom. After I've squeezed through the bars, I meet the evil eye once again which I must say, this was a very close encounter. Oh! If I died there again, I think the force that I would belt my table, I think my TV would go flying up into the sky. Not to the ceiling, to, to the sky, like up towards heaven, mate. Upon completion of chapter 1, I will get the Prison Achievement. On to chapter 2 now, which is probably my most hated chapter in this speedrun. Once I reach the top of this first set of stairs, I go to the room on the right. This contains another lantern, and once I've moved this chair into its correct position, it will let me into a hidden room that contains a gnome. I then chase the gnome to the top of the stairs, and that will be gnome number 4 collected. On to the living quarters, where it's safe to say my jumping skills need some work. Okay. 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 On the very top shelf, there is another statue. So I destroy that, grab the key, and then unlock the door. <laughs> Eat us. Eat us. Eat us. Ooh. Rah. 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 After exiting the elevator, there is another hunger sequence. This one also has a hidden lantern at the back, so I light that and then go and eat the fresh meat and get captured by Roger. Once I escape my cage, I need to drag another cage below this lever so I can jump on it and swing myself through the door. Once I have climbed the door, there is a candle that I need to light. I then encounter Roger for the first time of this chapter. I can get by him pretty easily by making sure I stay on the carpet, slide through the vent, and open the hatch. Once I drop out of the vent, I light another lantern and then head up this semi-hidden ladder, which will lead me to another gnome, and then into the pit containing all the shoes. The shoe pit is pretty simple, as long as I can jump far enough away from the suitcases and keep ahead of the monster. Now I need to escape from Roger in a chase. It's easy enough to do, as long as I jump a couple of times towards the end of the chase. Yeah, so do I. <clears throat> He's ki he killed most of my practice runs, to be honest. 
I do a lot of nightmares too. I've not played the game yet, but I might try it. In order to access under the wooden floor, I need to move this toy box and then jump on the loose wooden board. There is another statue at the back of this area, so I destroy it and reset checkpoint. Once I've climbed up to where the janitor is, I slide through the vent and then climb up the drawers on the right to escape. Oh shit. Is that supposed to remake? Uh, probably at some point. I didn't play the original. But I heard good things about it. For the section where I need to open the door, I crouch next to the janitor, wait for the shoe to drop, and then throw it at the button. All I need to do now is run away and Roger will never catch me. There is a gnome hiding away under this table. I get close to him to make him run away and hide behind the books and then give the little chieftain a hug. I then climb up the bookcase. Once I reach the top, I light another candle and then jump onto the piano where there is a secret achievement to get. I need to get Six to run up and down the entire piano a couple of times to get the achievement Six's Song. Bloody hate that piano, I always feel like I'm going to fall off it and die. Once I've reached the top of the bookshelf on the left, I opt to perform the risky strategy by running in front of Roger and hoping he doesn't see me. Thankfully it went well and I lit up a candle on the way to the TV room. I did skip the candle at the top of the bookshelves though, because this one takes way too long to get and it can be quite risky. If I fall, I'll die. Now that the TV room has been reached, I turn it on and then hide in this corner holding the crank. Wait for Roger to enter and then sneak past him. Eat us. Eat us. Oh. I took a bit of a risk by doing these jumps a lot faster than normal and could have easily died. After that escapade, I solved the steam puzzle room very quickly and remembered to hold onto the door for longer than usual. I definitely, definitely didn't die here a couple of times in practice. After the steam room, I enter the vent where I light another lantern and learn that Roger's arms can actually come through both of these holes. Oh, there's two arms. I never knew there was two arms. Once I drop out of the hole, I run away from Roger, slide under the door, and then break the cage, cutting off Roger's arms. I can now climb into the vent, finish chapter 2, and get the achievement, The Lair. I start off by grabbing one of these hooks on this zipline-like structure. This will take me into the kitchen area. I'm playing on Steam, but I'm using a mod that gives me uh, cool-looking achievement notifications. I then land onto a pile of body bags, where another hunger sequence begins. But I actually managed to skip one of them this time. Nice. I went for it that time. I actually got it. After Six eats the rat, I push through the body storage area and drop down a hidden hole. This leads to a statue that I destroy and then climb the ladder before entering the cooking area. Here is where I get another miscellaneous achievement. That achievement is kitchen hand and all I need to do is throw three ingredients into the large pot in the middle of the kitchen. This took me a long time to figure out how to do quickly and consistently. Firstly, I grab the carrot crawl through this hole and then start sprinting when I am far enough away from the chef. I then run towards the back of the kitchen, being careful not to close the oven door, and throw the carrot into the pot. I then wait right here in this specific location for the chef to pick up a sausage. Run to the right, grab the fish, and then wait by this oven door. When the chef is standing near the big pot, I close the door, which causes him to drop the sausage right in front of the pot and also investigate the oven door by going around the back side of the kitchen. This allows me enough time to throw the fish into the pot, pick up the sausage and throw that in there too. That will give me the kitchen hand achievement and I can now make my way to the rafters, lighting up another lantern on the way. After the rafters, I end up in the toilet, which does contain another candle, but I skip this one because it takes too long to get. 
In the hallway, I jump onto this shelf and drop the teapot onto the ground. This breaks and then wakes up the chef that is asleep. I can hide under the bed till he leaves and then take the key off the wall. I pick up the key, run down the hallway and then drop it at the bottom of the stairs because I need to go back into the toilet where a gnome is located. I hug the gnome and then go down the elevator while holding the key. There is also another gnome located in the ingredients room hidden inside this red jar. I smash that, hug the gnome and then reset checkpoint. Resetting the checkpoint forces the chef to stay in the back of the kitchen which allows me to get to the locked door safely, consistently and much faster than the alternative methods. I now need to drop three pieces of meat into the sausage maker. One of the pieces is already in the correct position, so I drag one from the left when I enter the freezer onto the hatch and then climb up to get the last piece of meat from the ceiling. There is also a lantern and a statue hidden in the vent on the right hand side. So I deal with those, head back down the elevator, grab a gnome that's hiding underneath the table and then make the sausages. For the next area, I need to call the elevator to the floor where I am on and then hide in a corner because one of the chefs will be in the elevator when it arrives. I squeeze past the chef and get on the elevator. When I reach the bottom, however, I'm gonna need to get into a vent and hide. I then run next to the chef in this room, which will trigger a checkpoint and allow me to reset. This makes things much more consistent because I can just run onto the table and grab the key. I just use a reset to make this more consistent. Getting away from the chef is much easier and faster without having to go into the next room and activate the machinery. I can now head back into the elevator and unlock the door. Once through the door, I need to open the garbage chute and drop down. At the bottom of the chute, there is a statue on the left corner. So I deal with that and then climb up the wall on the right hand side. Now, I don't use glitches in speedruns very often, but this one was just too cool to miss out on. I climb the shelves with the pots and pans on, jump over to where the hooks rotate and then onto the back shelf that has a lantern. Once the lantern is lit, I time my jump perfectly and I can grab onto this hook. After a few seconds, it will teleport me to the end of the level skipping the dishwasher section entirely and saving about two minutes of time. Once I grab onto the last hook, I am totally safe. Oh, that was so close to dying. And when I crawl through the hole at the end, I get the achievement, the kitchen. Starting off chapter 4, I go through the hole on the left, grab another gnome, and then reset the checkpoint to bring me back. And this is actually my favourite part of the game. Just look at how beautiful this shot is. It's just my favourite in the entire game. Quick comment on how much you love this shot. I do love this shot, it's so good. It's so lovely. Just the depth of field on the background, you're like, what is that? The way the camera zooms out, the way it bounces around. It's very nice. Once I have reached the top of the anchor's chain, I progress through to the restaurant area, where the run could die at any moment. We go again. Behind one of the chairs, there is a hole that contains a gnome and a lantern. I hug the gnome, light the lantern, and now I'll get the achievement, light up your life. Now it's time for the dreaded table run, which I definitely died at a few times during practice. I managed to get past safely, and then I trigger the man to chase after me. 
I immediately turn around and jump on top of these boxes, and then crouch in the corner. This triggers the fat man to keep grabbing me, but isn't actually able to do so. After six attempts, I'll get the achievement elusive. Once that's done, I use the man's fat as a trampoline and then run past him, just barely escaping. Oh, f me in the arse sideways and call me Charlotte. I then encounter the chef once again, but all I need to do to avoid him this time is to run away from him and hide in the corner of the bathroom. Once he leaves and bangs the door on his way out, a metal object falls from the shelf and I can use it to smash the mirror and get on top of the pipes. There is a statue located at the end of these pipes, lower down, so I carefully traverse the small pipe, drop down and break the statue before heading into the elevator. Did I get the achievement for lighting up the lamps? I'm pretty sure I did. Before triggering the final chase sequence, I hug one more gnome and then continue to the end of this chapter. Come on, Six, run faster. He's just fing bollocks. She might die. Oh, f hell. Oh. With the last gnome consumed and not hugged, I will get the achievement Little Lost Things. Nice. Okay, two more statues. Just before entering the elevator, I go backwards and break another statue, leaving me only one more left to destroy in the game. Upon completion of this chapter, I will get the achievement, the guest area. Remember the damn statue. Can people spam in chat? Remember the damn statue or remember the statue, statue, anything. I cannot miss this statue because I missed it yesterday on practice. With the key acquired from the pot, I remember to destroy the last statue to get the rascal achievement. Boom. There we go. The rascal. Now realistically, there's only one more place I can die. And it's in a minute. After I unlock the door downstairs, the last place I could die is in this chase sequence. I could easily mess it up and not slide in the hole in time. Thankfully, that didn't happen. I finish off the main game by pointing the mirror at the lady multiple times, eat the lady, and then perform the almost three minute walk to get the achievement, the lady's quarters. I also get the achievement hard to decor, and that is for beating the game in under an hour without dying a single time. With no hesitation, I start the first chapter of the DLC, which in my opinion is by far the hardest of the three chapters. So the pressure is kind of off a little bit. The DLC is tough. I do struggle a bit with, with the water monsters. The water monster in this one. He can be very weird. And I'm not too certain as to how he works. But I can actually die in the DLC. Because there's no achievement for that. So, And I am actually just died to the most random thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Thankfully, I died here and not a few minutes earlier in the main game because then I would be mad. He's supposed to be under the bed. Why was he not under the bed? Without dying this time, I drop down the hole, make my way to the ground floor and get past the light while chasing this mysterious little girl. I get through the toy playroom by just jumping up on the seesaw and straight onto the chest of drawers, run through to the toilet and collect the first bottle of the run located on this sink. Once that's collected, I move the cage to the middle of the room in order for me to climb on top of the larger cages and then descend via the bedsheets. Once I've climbed up the wooden boxes, Yeet us. 
and drop down the manhole, the DLC really begins. The first task is to move the suitcase across to the right side, so I can jump up onto the platform. Once that's done, I collect the flashlight, which I much prefer than Six's lighter. For the next area, I just need to avoid some of the worms by jumping over them, and then climb the wall to escape. The next areas just require a little bit of swimming. I do meet Grandma in the second swimming area though, but as long as I consistently swim to the right, she will never catch me. I jump into a pit, pick up an empty can, throw it at the pack of the worms and then jump into the hole that they were covering. Dropping into some water, I need to climb the wall, activate the power to the main lever by climbing the metal tube in the middle and then jumping onto the lever. I then push the main lever once to the right and then jump back into the water. This will allow me to access one of the pipes that leads to the second bottle of the Depths DLC. I wait for the eye to pop up on the bottom right and reset checkpoint. This teleports me back to the main lever, but I do need to reactivate the power. This time I push the lever three times to the right and I can now progress to the next area when I jump back into the water. I then enter another area where the grandma will chase me in the water. I can just speed through it though, jumping from object to object to stay out of the water. Once I reach the two silos, I do a jump from the second one which lands me on the platform and that contains a third bottle. I open it, run across the floating objects and then have a small mishap. No! Recovery, recovery, recovery. <laughs> I was like, please, please spawn me back here. I opted for the safer and intended way to do this section by rising the meat out of the water, climbing onto the pier-like structure and throwing a fish onto the left side of the water. It is possible to just swim across, but I couldn't do it consistently in practice. With that section out of the way, I get another miscellaneous achievement, fun and games ahead, by throwing this ball into the bucket in the middle of the room. Yes. I get a little speed boost while pushing this plank by trying to grab onto it and then open the door by using the loose plank that's in front of it. This leads to a room where I need to break the red pot in order to get the key. The fastest way to do this is by lowering the water using the lever and then jump into the water where the red pot is going to land. I land on the table instantly without needing to move the chair so I can just push the pot, grab the key and then open the door. The next area has the electrocuted water. The fastest way to progress here is to lower the water, jump into it and just move one of these boxes to the top of the pool. Once the water is rising, I can safely make the jump across to the other side. Whoa. Okay, I believe this is one of the areas that's a bit ropey. I might need to try it a couple times. This water section is another one that I couldn't get down consistently. In the end, I just went full YOLO, and luckily in this run, it worked first try. Okay, I do make it this time. At the end of this area, I need to climb another wall, but halfway up, I need to jump onto a wooden beam and jump across. Bottle number four is located there. You can't make the jump back, so I had to go into the water, which wastes some time. Now this is probably the most annoying part of this chapter. The normal way to clear this takes a long time. I had to use a risky strategy to speed this up, but if I got it wrong, it would cost me a lot of time. I crossed onto the other platform, climbed up the wall, and then grabbed the crank. I dropped the crank down the side of the wall which I came up on, and then when I got to the bottom, picked up the crank and threw it onto the suitcase. From here, I pushed the suitcase pretty close to the other side, Climb the suitcase and then throw the crank onto the hard surface. Once that's done, I push the suitcase into a more suitable position. Rotate the lever and then exit the room. Perfect. Let's go. There is only one more water section left before the end of chapter one of the DLC. Eat us! I leapfrog my way across the water, jumping on the floating objects, and climb the ladder. I pull the lever which turns on the TV, use the light to jump across to the other platform, and then pull the other lever. 
While the grandma is destroying the platform that I was on, I jump into the water and book it to the platform with the TV. Once up, all I need to do is push the TV into the water and that's the end of grandma. The last thing I need to do is pull these two wooden planks off the wall and open up bottle number five of this DLC and then get captured by Roger. Chapter two of the DLC is by far my favorite in the entire game. This is the chapter where I have to use the gnomes to assist me. This gnome gets stuck in the door and once I pull him out, I can then yeet the little fella onto the door handle and he'll open the door for me. I then assist him over the boxes as I need him to pull down the lever to open up the main door. Then he assists me with pushing this very heavy chest. In the next room, I acquire some more gnomes and I throw both of them onto the table. They will push down the heavy chest, allowing me to climb up. I then free the third gnome of this area from the cage, give him a little hug, and then collect the first bottle of this chapter, which is located past the vent on the left-hand side. Okay, they're actually following me. Boys, they're actually following me. Yes, come on. You could hear some excitement in my voice because in practice, these little fellas in this chapter were just so inconsistent. Half the time they would just stand still and look at me as I tried to push the door and I'd need to manually bring them to the objective. So I was over the moon when they decided to cooperate first time. With the main furnace now on, I need to gather the rest of the chieftains into the main room. The first one tries to hide in this vent, but I get there too quickly for him. His friend is stuck in the coal, however, so I help a brother out and climb the ladder to the next area. I encounter Roger once again in this game, but as long as I run fast and don't stand on any coal, I should be able to make it to the next bottle. With the second bottle opened, I opt to go to the right side because Roger will be standing on the left side, and if I try to take the left side, which is slightly faster, it is very likely that I'll get grabbed. I jump across to the hanging coal boxes and into the next room, where I have to open up two cabinet doors, pull out the wooden stool, and then climb the cabinet. Exiting that room, I have to do some Spider-Man jumps. Now that I've located the working fuse, I need to climb up to it by using the filing cabinets, drop the fuse on the floor, and reset checkpoint. The reset checkpoint makes it so Roger is in a more consistent position and I can sneak by him easily as long as I don't stand on any coal. I pull the lever to blow up the fuses and then replace them with the two working ones. Boom. Yes. If you stand in the way, you can knock it back to where it came from. <laughs> okay, this next part is actually like, really annoying. This next area has three gnomes and a bottle that I need to collect. I open up the cabinet to release two of the chieftains and then push this movable cage all the way to the right side so it can move into a good position when the ship rocks to the left. I then grab the first gnome by jumping over the box and cutting him off as he tries to run away from me. Look at that for speed. After that, I climb the drawers and to the left there is the third bottle of this chapter. Then I can drop down and cross to the second gnome by using the moving cage. Excuse me, sir. I'm just popping in. You just... Mm, I'm just gonna wait. I'm just gonna wait. This is going fine. This is going really good. I'm just gonna wait, wait. Yetus. Hold on to him because I need to throw him off. Hey, Yetus. The last gnome is located near the door. I pick him up and yeet all three of them onto the handle to open the door. I use a little trick here by not keeping this door open, going down the elevator and resetting the checkpoint. This teleports all three of the gnomes to me and saves me a bunch of time. The chieftains have assembled. The chieftains have assembled. Eat us. Oh. Now with all of the gnomes rescued to the right side of the furnace, I can now go to the left side of the furnace room. At the top of the ladders, the fourth bottle of this chapter is hidden at the bottom of these stairs. Bottle number four. Now it's time for Roger to start annoying me once again. Staying on the carpet and crouching where there is no carpet, I activate the power to the saw. Jump through the little window and then turn the saw on. This will deafen Roger and allow me to grab the wooden gnome which is needed for a miscellaneous achievement. I turned on my flashlight then by accident. 
Once Roger turns the saw off, I turn it straight back on. So I will have enough time to run with the gnome to the other room, open the hatch and then go through, throwing the wooden gnome in before I throw myself into the hatch. Once at the bottom of the garbage chute, I bring the wooden gnome to a room that contains an actual gnome. I can free the gnome from the glass jar by climbing onto this table and then jumping six times. With the gnome free, I hug it and then use it to bring down the ladder. Located on the floor above, there is a rotating valve that will lower the charcoal cart onto the tracks on the bottom and that will allow me to jump onto the wooden box and through the small gap. Time to rescue a few more gnomes, and there is one hidden in the coal that just keeps running away from me. Come here, you little sh**. With that gnome secured, I can then power the travelator and get across to the other side. I power up the second travelator and grab the gnome before he can escape, saving me a lot of time. Come on now, boys. Come on now, grab the thing now. Push a bit faster now. I let you have an early tea break now. Okay, this should be the last of the bottles for this DLC. It's my speed sound effect, yes. There we go. Okay, it was too good to be true. They are a little bit broken, still. Now I am free to push the minecart all the way to the right side, climb up the shelves, and then open the door from the other side. I then push the minecart all the way to the right. Come on now, boys. I'm just picking up your burden now. We're going to go to school. Yeah, that one was awful. Come on, little fellas. Come on. Come on. In the hole, in the hole, in the hole. Eat us. No. Fuck. Oh, I thought you like... I thought you like teleported into the ground. From here, the gnomes will start doing their job, and I can grab the wooden gnome and throw it into the main furnace. That will give me the achievement, Ashes in the Maw. This chapter is basically over. I just need to ascend the elevator, wait for the chieftains to move this heavy suitcase, and then jump on top of the elevator that contains the lady. Now I'm supposed to get the achievement end in sight, but I think the program I'm using for the achievement is bugged, and it will show up a little bit later on in the video. When I wake up from the nap, I climb the wall on the left side and use the hanging object to swing myself to the right side, where I will eventually end up in what looks like a house. The first bottle is located at the back of this hallway on top of the bookshelf. I collect that and then carefully crouch past the lady, being cautious to keep my flashlight off. There is a lot of backtracking in this chapter. The first step is to go to the library on the top right of the main area. I move the ladder to the left so it's possible to climb it all the way to the top and eventually pick up the book. I drop down to the right and put the three books in the correct locations, open up the hidden door and finally pick up the wooden statue. This statue is fake though and I need to bring it across the landing and swap it for the real white statue. There's no need to go all the way to the statue room just yet, so I throw the statue down the stairs and head to the top floor where the light puzzle is. Up here. I didn't realize that could happen. Once the puzzle is solved, I enter the room that needs five buttons to be pushed in a certain order. So I press those and end up in the room with the blue statue. Before picking it up though, I go all the way to the right side of the room and open up another bottle. And here I get the notification for the end in sight achievement. I can now pick up the statue and use it to escape this room by throwing it at the button. When I arrive back at the main room, I take the elevator down and bring both of the statues in the room to the right. This will trigger the lights to go out and move the lady to another position. From here, I need to return back to the library and pick up the black book and bring it to the leftmost area, almost to where the chapter starts. I run down the stairs, get past the shadow enemy, and all the way to the left where I can place the book. Now I just run into the room, break the vase giving me the ashes to ashes achievement, and then reset checkpoint. The reset checkpoint despawns the shadow enemies from where the key is and makes this much easier. 
I grab the key and then head back to the top floor using the elevator to unlock the door. Rose at the checkpoint there, um, because it despawns the two shadow guys that are, that are going to be there on the way back. I found that out by mistake. It just works out. It just works out nicer. I wouldn't say it's faster, but it's more consistent anyways. As soon as I enter the door, I head down and pick up the third bottle of this chapter and then head to the room where I get attacked by the shadow enemies. Get back, demon! Usually I can just pull this and not have to worry about any of the other guys, but... I easily manage to pull the chair to the right location without any issues. And in the next room, I decide to kill all of the enemies in my way. It costs a small amount of time, but it's much more consistent. It's not worth dying there. The last part containing shadow enemies is where I need to rotate the valve in the middle to lower the painting and jump over it. And that didn't go so well. Oh, your mum. That cost me. With the hard parts of the DLC completed, I realised that this run was basically done. All I had to do now was pick up two more bottles and finish the game. One of the bottles was located behind this painting, which in order to open, I need to run across the piano a few times. Oh. And the final bottle of the run is located in the back right room when you enter the dark area where the lady is around. With the final bottle opened, I'll get the achievement I'm losing you. So the only thing that can stop this is if I'm, I've missed an achievement. I don't think I have. I got all the collectibles. I done the three miscellaneous. I threw the, the vegetables into the pot. I beat the game without dying in under an hour. I got all the little men. The final stretch. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's, done. it's, done. it's over. This is actually my the best run I've done. I think. Depends how long this takes. You skip the credits? Yeah. I just I get the achievement and I all F4. But I'm gonna I'm gonna press F9 just to make sure I've got all the achievements. Oh I have no steam overlay. 22 out of 22 achievements. Run's done. All F4 in the bin. Boom, there we go. A little nightmare. So you've unlocked all 22 out of 22 achievements. Now that I have every single achievement in the game, and completed the run in under 2 hours, it's time for the moment you've all been waiting for. Did Steam give me my money back? Of course they did. Once again, they gave me a full refund of both the game and the DLC. So when I make these videos, I usually only include the successful run, mainly because most of the refund runs are completed on the first try. But this one had a couple of mishaps. Janelle. What the f You are kidding me, right? The last run. I did have to I did have to change some settings up. <laughs> I'm fucking dead. Ah. So the initial idea was to give these Steam accounts away. However, they are tied to my custom email domain and I don't want to be giving these details away. So I opted to refund the other two copies of the game, double the amount, and give it to charity. The charity that I chose is a Norwegian charity that translates to mental health youth. It is a charity that helps to improve the mental health of young people in Norway and it is a charity that I hold close to my heart. I spent about £50 on the two copies of Little Nightmares and I donated about 1,200 knock, which translates to about £100. But yeah, that's it for the video guys. If you enjoyed, please do leave a like, it helps me out a ton. And if you have any questions about this run, feel free to ask in the comments section or join my Discord server and ask me there.